thing for biochemical. But now I want to actually do some of the corrections to show you. So I mentioned neurolymphatics. So neurolymphatics, literally it's the lymph that feeds this muscle. And so in your textbook, it's here. We call them the bananas. And because that's what they look like. And also the back of the head here, right at the base of the occiput. And how many people get headaches that start from here? Mm. And isn't it amazing mm. that that muscle is for the brain? Mm. Right, good. So I'm gonna do some rubbing. And it's quite firm rubbing. And we like those faces. <laughs> Shows we're doing our job properly. <laughs> Kinesiology face. Kinesiology face. Not so bad at all. So I can feel that this must the here feels tighter. Yeah. Mm. So you say to people, it's tighter on this side. How do you know? Clearly I'm a witch. <laughs> <laughs> what does it feel like and so to your fingers? It depends on it's not always the same, but in this case it was just more solid, it didn't yield as much. Mm. So I'm gonna go here. Ooh, less. Is that nice? Okay. Like horribly nice. <laughs> horribly nice, okay. So we don't, we, when people say it's really nice, it doesn't hurt, we're like, oh, that's boring. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, and now we've got the face at the exact point where my, again, I felt that tightness and this sort of unyielding. Good work, well done. You're welcome. And so I'm going to hold those neurovasculars we mentioned for the electrical. And the neurovasculars for this are points on the head. Yeah. called frontal eminences. I'm just going to hold them. These are really light. Just literally contact them. What these do is they send blood. So I've sent lymph to that muscle. Now I'm sending blood to this muscle. And what you'll find is often the practitioner size as something shifts in the body or the person's size or their tummy gurgles. These are all signs that something is shifting in their body. And because it was actually both sides that were unlocking, as we call it, it didn't lock. I'm going to rub point again, it's in the textbook, here, a little arrow that goes up and down. On the spine, I'm sort of moving the skin over the spine and this is called stress, a stress receptor, stress, no, spinal reflex, different, different technique, spinal reflex. And what this does is it sort of wakes where the nerves come out of the spine bundle, it wakes them up. Mm. Lovely? Yeah, it's quite, it can often be quite sharp. <laughs> I spit it into my teeth, actually. So I've done some structural, because I did the neurolymphatics, I've done some, in, in, um, I haven't done emotional, but we're not gonna go there right now. I've done the electrical, I've done the neurovasculars. She had some water for the biochemical. So the other one I need to do is her meridian, because I'm going to balance all of the bees. And her meridian in Chinese medicine uh, starts here, the central meridian starts here, and we zip up the central meridian. And so we're just going to very lightly zip up her central meridian. Just a few times. So we get to work with these lovely Chinese acupuncture points and the acupuncture meridians. So it's really exciting. So if you're really into that side of it, you can go down that rabbit hole. You can go into, as soon as we do the basics, we can go deeply into any of these rabbit holes. I mean, obviously creating functional kinesiology, I went so deeply into the biochemical and the emotional, actually. Like, whew, Tracy went very into the structural but still with the basics. So when you go to Tracy, you don't just get a massage or don't just get kinesiology focusing on structure. You're still going to get the food sensitivity testing. You're still going to get the emotional work. Mm. But just her passion area mm. is in that. Yeah? So now, have we done enough? So we're going to redo that muscle test. So you're going to hold out for me. And can we see that muscle? It looks different. Mm. Let's check this side and holding out. Now this one's not quite switching on yet, but do you remember it got, kept getting weaker and weaker? If we've done a correction, what you'll see is it gets stronger and stronger. The weaker muscle gets weaker, the strong muscle gets stronger. So some people always say, well, you're just not pushing as hard. And I go, oh, okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch Tracy's muscle off so that you can see something. 
I was always gobsmacked that you can switch a muscle off, but we can. And there are many ways that you can do it. One of the ways is to unzip a central meridian, which is why it feels horrible if someone stares you up and down, you mm. know, literally, literally, because they've literally <laughs> unzipped your central meridian. It feels horrible. Mm. So I'm going to unzip her. And you can see she's switched off, right? Magic. <laughs> so I'm just going to do that again. But I want you to watch my arm as I do that. You can see there's no mm. flex. There is nothing there, literally nothing there. I have to do nothing. Once that muscle's engaged, I actually, you can see my muscles, mm. I actually have to try and put some weight in. It's like a girder. So the muscles tell us everything. And so the way, so that's a muscle test and a correction. And the way that we muscle test, go into this in great depth and you get to practice it a lot, it is literally this simple. Take that muscle, you ask them to hold, you give the brain a second to log that request, and you squeeze, you find that clutch point, and then you gently release. That's the language. Mm -hmm. That's the language. Everything else is in a textbook. Mm -hmm. So yeah, supraspinatus latissimus dorsa, it's in a textbook. Mm -hmm. It's in a textbook. So it's not like, okay, well, I've got to learn all of this stuff that's really scary to learn. Thank you, Tracy. So we've mentioned, oh no, actually you can stay there. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, let's just, I want to talk to you about what you're actually going to be covering in the syllabus. You learn all the muscles. You learn how to do the corrections. You learn those organ um, meridian connections, which are mind-blowing. When you look at things like tibials for the bladder and you go anal fissures, that's insane. It's absolutely mind-blowing. You learn what food is good for that. And you also learn what food to avoid. So when people have got issues and they're coming in and they've got, well, I've got carpal tunnel and you go, right, okay, well, I remember that was on stomach, so let me go to stomach. Okay. Oh, yeah, okay, it's here. It's not supinated, there we go. Okay, yeah, okay, so I've got this pain here. Right, yeah, so I, yeah, it's here, actually. You're getting a pain because this muscle's tight, right? That's stomach, okay. I don't know this because I'm only just learning it, but it says, um, oh yeah, it says that you should definitely be avoiding fizzy drinks, sugar, wheat, chewing gum. Do you, do you eat any of those? Yeah, I eat gum every day. Okay, well maybe we could avoid the gum and see if we can get this to go. Wouldn't that be good? <laughs> and it's so specific. It's so specific. Because then we can start going to something like bladder. Or where am I here? Triple warmer. Oh, no, let's go to bladder. Because I said bladder. I haven't cut this book yet because I can cut it. It's really handy. Let's go to bladder. Foods to avoid. Oh, foods containing ox oxalates and oxalic acids. That'll be your spinach, your peas. Gluten's actually across the board though, to be fair, because gluten is shocking. So you start to go, oh, this is really specific. It's not, wow, that's amazing. Do you eat a lot of spinach? Oh, I eat spinach every day, I have it in a smoothie. Mm -hmm. Ah, we are having too many oxides. So it's all here, so it's all here. But we don't just want to be able to tell them what to avoid. Kinesiology is famous for food sensitivity testing. Now, a lot of people pay a lot of money to go and have hair tests. I'm not a fan of them because they come back with, say, 60 things. It's not relevant. What we've got to look at is what are people eating every day and in an order as well. You take away like the big issues and then the body, actually, the immune system can change. So I used to have an allergy to uh, pineapple and I used to be intolerant to loads of different foods. There's a lot I couldn't eat, but I could eat wheat. But when I discovered I was actually intolerant to wheat, I just didn't seem to get any symptoms from wheat. Actually, all of my, my immune system kind of, when I gave it up, my immune system was able to sort itself out. And all of the things that I'd been intolerant to before I could now eat, pineapple I can now eat. And it's now wheat that it reacts to. 
So it's like your immune system's just confused. Mm -hmm. So let's have a look at a couple of things. So in we have these amazing test kits, and in our amazing test kits we have a load of food. And so we're going to do some food testing because food testing is really interesting. I'm going to do some grains. Uh, where are you? There. So, so, everyone talks about being gluten free. Gluten isn't necessarily the enemy. It, wheat tends to be a problem because it, we hybrid the grain, the gluten content went up, we spray it with a pesticide. So a lot of people are actually okay with other grains, they, but they've lumped them all in together and now they're confused. Um, some people aren't okay with any of it because their guts are really an issue. But human beings, we should be able to tolerate most things. And if we can't, it's because unless it's something like we, where we have broken it, the, the issue is with our immune system. So what we're looking to do is to actually get our immune system back to a place where it can tolerate these things. Yeah? So food testing is the exact opposite of uh, what, we just, what we're looking for is the opposite. I'm looking for, we're intolerant to something. So that muscle's nice and strong now, it's nice and fixed up. If we're intolerant to a food, it will switch the muscle off. And that's what we're looking for. It's really simple. So we can be specific. So if Tracy had a bad neck, we could actually test the food once we've strengthened it against that neck and see. It's so, it's just so like, wow, when someone's got a bad ankle or a bad neck, when you can actually use a little pot of food and you see it switching off that neck when two seconds before it was solid as a rock. Mm -hmm. But to give you the idea, I'm going to start with some things. So we do three little tests, holding up. That's lovely. Test number two. So this is just testing different things. Uh, so, is, so this is this muscle. Is there any other muscle in the body is the test I'm asking. I'm pressing a point on the back of her neck. And then I'm just making sure that, do you remember I was able to turn her muscle off? Mm -hmm. That's good. A muscle that's strong, a bit like what Zoyas was saying, it's strong, but it knows when to take time out. So I want to know, is this uh, letting the muscle still take time out? Yes, it is. So Tracy is fine with gluten-free oats. Sorry, so it's fun. <laughs> Holding out. Ah, can you see that switch off? Yeah. yeah. Instantly switched off, yeah? Holding out. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Tracy doesn't know I'm testing. <laughs> That's oats. Mm. Oh, mm. normal oats. Not the gluten-free oats. Let's go in with some, let's go in with some grains. It's interesting. Holding out. Oh, and again. Now, my brain would have said that that's probably one she's fine with because it's not one that we have a lot of exposure to and a lot of people are fine, but it's barley. Oh. Yeah. And that's in, in beer as well, a lot of beers. Oh, I know, what a bummer. So barley, look, just literally switching her off. Oh. That's really disappointing. It is disappointing. Holding out. This one's got potential. Um, still not switching off. Can her muscle have time out? Yes, it can. So she's fine with rye. So good rye bread, rye beer. Ooh. We're all, nice. See, we've, yeah, that's good, isn't it? And then we're going to go for a couple of hours. Oh, so you see what I mean by, ah, that's a no. Do you get that? That's switching off. Mm -hmm. That's spelt, which is very close to wheat. Mm -hmm. That's literally a no. So that's actually wheat. Now wheat's a really interesting one and we'll, we'll get you all to play around with this because this is a non-kinesiology test but I do like to show it. So if Tracy, just lift your leg up and down. Okay, easy? Yeah. Okay, you can all have a go at this so that you know it's not staged. And now if I put the wheat, so we put it here, you might be wondering why we put it here. So it's in glass or plastic, it's inert, it's not in um, uh, metal, which would block the signal. As long as it's by our salivary glands, our, our body doesn't know if it's in, the, our brain doesn't know if it's in the mouth or out of the mouth, it doesn't care. It's just close enough to the salivary glands for it to, to uh, be able to recognise it. So now if you can try and lift your leg. I can't. Just can't lift it. Just can't lift it. It's 
and then we put this on, and that is literally it's it's such a drain on her body. <laughs> Isn't it amazing? You'll all get a go at this in a moment. <laughs> <laughs> I, do. I do not want to do that ever again. <laughs> and so when you've actually got someone who's got a bad neck, and then you've and then they just can't even hold their neck up. It's so obvious. So it's not me as a practitioner saying, I think you should meet we. It's like your body could not have showed you more clearly. Isn't that fantastic? So fantastic. Um, <laughs> so in that particular test, one of three things will happen. That it, nothing particularly, it doesn't, it's, it's a non-kinesiological test. It just means that they're, they're it's, they could still be intolerant to it in other places because that's just one muscle. Uh, it's just a pretty obvious one because the leg's heavy. Or it gets really, really easy to lift the leg. And that means that their body's having to produce so much adrenaline, it's actually worse than that response. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's su such a stress response just to help just to get them to be able to lift the leg. Uh, so thank you for the food testing. So you'll be able to do food sensitivity testing. And then, once you've got done foundation, if you want to carry on, what we're able to do is we we're able to take a, a muscle that's switching off. Let's find what do we think would be switching off. Fasciolata. So fasciolata is the large intestine muscle. And so this little muscle here holding out for me. No, that's switching off. We're able to kind of go, okay, fasciolata, large intestine. What does my book say about the large intestine? Okay, it needs fiber. It needs, um, what's that, vitamin? Uh, Meg 3, likes Meg 3. Let me actually look what's in the book. Which I wrote so I should know. Uh, it needs, I just want to check what's actually in the book. So digestive aid, it needs probiotics, it needs fibre, possibly things like iron, magnesium. So then if you've got, once you go on something like practitioner, we can then start to get a fabulous test kit of nutritional supplementation. And we can look at, let me find my magnesiums. One. This is not in the order that I usually have it. Mm -hmm. So I've got a couple of magnesiums here. Uh, you could argue for, you know, people would say, oh, magnesium glycinate is the best because it's really good for bowels. Some people say, oh, no, magnesium citrate. Some people say, oh, magnesium malate. Doesn't matter, mm -hmm. Tracy's body's gonna tell us. So I've got a couple here. And so what I'm gonna do is the reverse of the food testing. I'm gonna put this here and I wanna see if this strengthens this muscle. That's what we're looking for. This is kind of magic. So you hold out for me. No. Then hold out for me. Look at that. Look at that. What's that? Magnesium citrate. So that's a magnesium that's really absorbable in the bowel, really good for getting bowels moving. And how magic is that? And in terms of, do I have to try and sell someone a supplement? No, their body has just done it. Mm -hmm. I'm not recommending, you know, and I'm like, great, your body has said this, and this, and this. So that's when we go into practitioner, we add in supplements. Uh, some kinesiology schools teach supplements in foundation. It's just, there's a lot to learn in foundation, and we believe in getting those, embedding those basics really well, to learn the language do the foods, do the food testing, and then add in something.